cybers. Why is the game not showing up on screen? <laughs> there it is. Greetings, cybers. It's Curl back with fun. Reverse 1999. I'm sorry, I got Final Fantasy on the brain after watching the fan fest last night. I'm excited for Dawn's Rail. I really am. Not only are we getting a dual world class viper, we're finally getting the new Magic DPS job, Pictomancer. I'm definitely going to be playing that class when Dawn's Rail comes out. Bonjour. Comment allez-vous? But enough about that. What we're here for is. The fourth act of the main story. And it makes you wonder, is there not a fifth act? Because I don't see it. Maybe after I go through this next one first. I'm wondering how it's going to continue after the third one. Because it kind of left off on quite a note. Britain finally gets to see the storm and sees the effects it has on others. Leading to the loss of their friends after finally escaping the place. And then Madame Z shows up behind her, behind her, asking Virgin if does he want to become the timekeeper. Which obviously she must have said yes to, otherwise she wouldn't be the timekeeper now. Well, it's gonna see how it continues on from this point. I'm not sure if we're still going on through Virgin's memory or if we're finally waking up and we continue on after what happened with Snyder and thing with the management vindicta you've had it before the silent old and familiar black i guess we are still going to remember it el oro de los tigres an old umbrella part one Lewis? What's he doing here? Burden. Oh, we're inside the case? Through the windows, he sees a beam of light penetrate through the statue suspended in time. I saw Burden by the storm. No, it's just a nightmare. <sighs> the slender figure sits, gets up. The lobby is as spacious as it used to be, but sees the only one walking across it now. A nightmare overly real. Is it because I haven't seen them for so long? How did Yuvis end up here? I don't call her with being with us when the storm happened. Since they returned to the Foundation, each of them have been invited to a one-on-one -on -one talk with the Foundation. Can this game stop doing that? Was the first to leave. She said she was going to so talk to Madame Z about okay. which department we would belong to. I haven't heard from her since then. Yes. Here are their background reports I wrote for your perusal. Then, Sotheby. Her boredom was swept away by the invitation. She departed in such a haste that her beloved doll was left behind on the carpet. This is Sotheby, a well-educated lady born in a traditional arcanist family. She comes from an extremely privileged background. Her family had a special influence around the world. Besides, she has limited social skills and scientific knowledge. It will be difficult to assimilate her. Compared to Sotheby, Mr. Apple was apparently not very happy to be invited. When he left, he turned a little green. Really? Mr. Apple, under his modest and gentle appearance, lies a sharp perception by nature. Being so erudite, he always has his own views of our historical intelligence. Mm. As far as I know, he remains upset about Captain Regulus's involuntary affiliations with the Foundation. While Regulus has never been truly accepted by the Foundation, she has missed out all the education and training a member of the Foundation should have received. The influence left by the outside world on her is like a banner among the ordinary staff in the Foundation. A banner way too salient. Once the banner was held up, new arguments were raised, and thus exacerbated the factional conflict inside the Foundation. Hmm. Factional conflict? 
There ought to be no factions in the foundation. All of us share one common goal. You should know that well. Oh, now wants to wait for me. Okay. But the conflict has been there all the time, and it only grows. Only grows. The group that believes in mankind's supremacy is splitting the Foundation's belief apart. So, time isn't the only thing you've been observing this year. The conflicts cannot be covered by regulations anymore, Madam Z. The storm has been here for eight years. None of the people who are left behind can shake off the influence it brought. Human technologies are being reversed, while Arcanum is blooming. The unexpected first storm brought more than half of the Foundation's elite members away from us. The number of staff of the House of Integratus and the Committee cannot compare with that of their heyday, even now. In order to contend against man's vindictate, we have kept absorbing Arcanus from the outside world. However, the dissenting voices have only grown louder. Right. There's no way of them fighting man's vindictate when they have so many independent voices and arcanists among their number. The Foundation is trying to establish order, but it's hard to establish that order when it feels so oppressive to those that don't want it. Loud enough to be heard, and have become a faction that couldn't be shaken. The Mankind Caucus. Mankind Caucus? Beyond their control, these new arcanists only brought fear. They demand an unchallengeable power to make decisions and a harsher control of Arcanists. Madam Z, I don't want my friends or me to be the sacrifice of this conflict, as we were four years ago. That's why you handed in the background reports of those Arcanists as the evidence for your proposition in the negotiation. Burton, what do you want? A neutral, safe, and legitimate place for us. What if? I am also on the side of Mankind Caucus. I don't know whose side you're on, but I believe the future you pursue doesn't end up with the Foundation being split apart by factional conflict. <sighs> That's what I learned from that stormy night. Your eyes told me. You didn't belong to that chess game. You may leave the reports. I need some time. No matter what your decision is, In the middle of the office stands slowly the lady in white. She flips through the flat files and sighs and picks up the phone. Please put me through Delegate Mark. Hmm. It's really hard to get a read on Madame Z. It's hard to tell if she's an ally or not. The long carway is located between the committee and the House of Interest, forming a bridge between the two loci of power. Familiar and unfamiliar ones bustle around in the hallway, holding proposals that only have a 1 in 10 chance of passing. Hey, Burton. Hello. Your friend is waiting for you in the rehab center. Mesmer Jr., remember? Let us take you there, so you guys can catch up. So, Burton is trying to... Persuade the foundation into letting Soda be, Soda be, and Truvis and Apple and Mr. Apple into joining the foundation. On paper, it sounds like a good idea, but it's hard to say. All of them are too individual, or too. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, free willed, I guess. So it'd be kind of difficult to get them to join the foundation side. Trail 1, wet letter. A letter with lovely stamps, wet by dues. Dear Z, the last person from who I'd expect a letter. I'm glad to hear from you about what you wrote to ask. I didn't find anything. I didn't find anything. No one in the France branch knows about the storm, including the leader and some of the senior officers. I think you have to give up on this one. But we need to know more about the storm. So do those big sons. That's why the Foundation is desperate for a source of information, and values the Timekeeper so much. That being the case, we are back to the beginning. How ridiculous. 
I don't think there is anything else I can do for you or her. The good news is, my business trip to the France branch has been smooth, and I'm estimated to be back in the headquarters tomorrow afternoon. I'm writing this before my way back, so I can use the beautiful stamp, special stamp I got here. Maybe we can have another game another game by then. The people here are not good at ping pong, so things become, became boring after I had beaten everyone I saw. By the way, congratulations on your promotion. I'm glad to know you've already adapted to the style of communication and the work in the foundation. Clever as you are, we all know you are still thinking and acting the scientist way. Anyway, the time no longer goes forward, but it didn't stop. It has brought us to this mess, and we have to do nothing. Do something. One more thing. Keep the black umbrella you mentioned. You don't always get to find rain gear produced by someone that witnesses and braves the storm. Yours, cats from France, France. Mm. Under the bricks and stones, few plants can vegetate here. Part 2 The Outsider. Miss Druvis, we are waiting for your response. Now, I am the last to be invited. Is there anything else that concerns you, Miss Druvis? When will my friends come back? They are waiting for you outside the suitcase, just as we are. All we want is an opportunity to talk to you face to face. Please wait a moment. Hesitant. There's no time to feel attached to the past. She looks at the brown granules in her palm. These are seeds of trees. She wags the fingers. The seeds are sprinkled on the ground by the stairs. They quickly roll and disappear into the gaps and crevices. I guess he's planning something just in case. With the foundation, you can never be too sure. SBDM library. Her friends are not here, of course. And she's sitting across from... Uh, dang, what was this woman's name? Augustine? I can't remember. May I ask where we are? The library. A place where people let down their guards. Constantine, that's right, Constantine. I was thinking of someone else when I said Augustine. Trust always facilitates cooperation, don't you think? But I don't even know your name. The name is Constantine. I'm the vice president of the joint committee of the Foundation. Please allow me to extend a welcome on behalf of the Foundation. She taps her pen on the table and calls out a thin pile of documents. Signatures are left blank on the paper. We have sent this document into that suitcase days ago. I should assume that you have read it. What's your conclusion then, Miss Weyerhauser? Are you referring to inviting Sotheby, Mr. Apple and me, to join the Foundation? We need to discuss this with Burton before we give you a proper response. We don't know much about the Foundation. As far as I'm concerned, I do not yet intend to join any organization. Hmm. That is to say, you are inclined to turn down my proposal. To be fair, you're not really giving her much reason not to. And quite frankly, it seems like the only one she trusts to understand this proposal from would be Virgin. So I don't I fail to see the problem of not letting her see Virgin about this first. My apologies. Burton has not only been of great help to us, but also saved us from the storm. I cannot accept the invitation without her opinion. Neither can I make decisions for others. Fair enough. I remember Burton trying to save Snyder. I don't know what happened there. Snyder did seem to hold abilities of an Arcanist, so how does she get swept up in the storm? Constantine gets up on her feet and walks to the other side of the table. There stands an unfinished card tower. You, 
who accidentally and rather luckily escaped from the storm in 1929 and now seek refuge from the Foundation. Weyerhaeuser, Sotheby, and Apple, you are the spire of the tower. Between you and the Foundation, the stories in the middle are our investigators who go out to rescue the wandering arcanists and humans. Burton is one of them. Merely a drop in the ocean. Verton, indeed, is the key to connect you and the Foundation. But let's not forget, only an entity as massive and powerful as the Foundation can provide you with long-lasting protection. Without the Foundation's supplies, manpower and technology even Burton can barely sail against the great tides of history let alone the ordinary people whose fate is doomed to struggle in the endless hazards of time open your eyes and take a look we are the unshakable fortress you should rely on Do you still wish to talk to Verton first? She's got away with she's got away with words. I'll give her that much. I still don't trust her though. <sighs> she's receiving a treatment from us, which means she won't make it back by your side before any decision is made. Her suitcase will also be retrieved for research purposes after the meeting. As compensation for your displacement, we will arrange you a more decent room. Miss Z will show you around the headquarters tomorrow. Go walk around and meet some people. Perhaps it will help you see what the most beneficial choice to all of us would be. I will wait for your answer. But... But... Don't keep me waiting for too long. <sighs> Again, I don't trust her. Like, she gives me Amanda Waller vibes. And that's saying something. Like, if you watch Suicide Squad or anything involving DC, y'all know how Amanda Waller acts. Hopping and bouncing, it marches forward with the pride of an alchemist and the manner of a lady. Part 3. A Coat Rack. Lobby, St. Foundation. Yes. I have received a report on the Chicago office. Well done. The envelope leaves her and flies out of the window. Madam Z quickly walks through the crowds and stops at the door in the hallway. Aside from the vibrant secret secretary area, the entire hallway is bathed in a serene vibe. This is the door to her own office. Why is he here? Good timing. <laughs> Why are you in Z's office? <gasps> Did I startle you? Considering what we've been through together, I didn't expect you to be as surprised as Miss Weyerhaeuser was. Woman, you the one showing up in this woman's office unannounced, out of nowhere. While he was gone, might I add. Anyone would be surprised. Sharon didn't tell me you're here. There's no need to tense up. I told her not to say anything. Woman, I feel like with you, there's plenty of reasons, reasons to tense up. I have talked to Miss Weyerhaeuser. Everything is going well. She's gotten quite a shock. That little pale face. Like a stressed cat. She's in dire need of comfort from a friend. What do you want me to do? To do what a good tamer would do. Reach her with a sincere, friendly gesture. Ease their pains, answer their questions, and lead them on to the right path. The right path or your path? Of course. Most importantly, make them be of use to us to serve the course of the peace of mankind. See, now that's where she's losing me. That's where she's losing me. Saying stuff like, be of use to you. And 
observe the course of the peace of mankind. Anything that involves the peace of mankind is going to be some kind of creepy or some kind of messed up, corrupt way about it. This why I don't. It's stuff like this that maybe trust certain not not trust certain things in video games. Like there's so many things in, in games that set off instant red flags when you play them enough times. One of those things for me being when there's a country that's governed by a church. Like the government, like any crime or anything like that, you get judged under an archbishop or something like that. Heaven's Ward and Final Fantasy 14 taught me that. When you got authority figures like Constantine, that sets off a lot of red flags. I see. Constantine, Constantine. Constantine feels pleased with the response. She so gets up and walks towards the door. None of them has signed the agreement. But this recruitment is essential for us. For the short term and for the long run. Can you see what I am doing? Madam Z listens with her head bowed. Constantine smiles. Oh. And there's one more thing. Don't address her as Miss Weyerhauser. She doesn't like it. I'll take note on that. She stares at her until that slim, tall figure goes through the door and disappears in a distant light. <sighs> but you can't help but feel it feel uneasy and nervous. Five around. and two thirds portions of silver wine, 20 drops of toad oil, and some crumbles of pure gold from Ukayali. So the bee, what are you doing now? So the bee rests her head on the table, staring to semi solid liquid in the tube. She contemplates for a bit and takes out two more tubes with bright colored materials inside from under her dress. Last ingredient, the burning acid salts. The burning what salts? So the bee's incredible shape-shifting potion will be done at any minute. So this, so this bee's incredible what potion? Oh lord. The burning acid salts fall into the bowl, and of that bowl, out of that bowl, raises a strange smell. Hmm? What? What is going on? The, the edge of the potion has turned pink. <gasps> Blimey! It's the iron bowl! It reacted with the potion! Oh no, this is not good. What effect will it cause now? I should have brought my crucible with me. Nothing can work as a decent vessel here. She jumps up with an annoyance and starts taking circles in, in the room. <sighs> Time is against me! Dinner will be served at any minute. I have to make up my mind now. She is quickly counting the ingredients hidden under her dress. 23, 24, 106. How'd you count that fast? Count up that high that fast. Not far away from the room, footsteps come closer and closer to her closed door. Miss Sotheby, dinner is ready. <gasps> well, wait, don't come in. Oh, I don't have enough ingredients for another potion. What can I do? Wing it. This could be the last chance to make it out. Oh, she's trying to escape. I go now. Miss Sotheby, do you need help? Uh, I am putting on stockings. This is ladies' dressing time, so don't you come in. <laughs> Just a minute. The tube is radiating, radiating heat in her palm. It's all right. I'll be fine. I may look a bit different from expected, but it doesn't matter. <sighs> Three, two, one. And down the hatch. She inhales deeply and finishes the potion in one gulp. The unperfect potion flows through her throat, reeking of the smell of timber in her esophagus. She feels something is tickling her in the hair. Her head comes, seems to lose its weight. Her nails become fluffy like cotton, stretching out in all directions. What the hell is happening? There seems to be a sun hatching in her larynx. Hanging over the rest of her body. This is a feeling too distinct to be overlooked. <sighs> My throat is burning! <coughs> huh. 
Huh, seems that inv invisibility potion turned into more of a seep sifting potion. Oh wait, yeah, it was supposed to be it was supposed to be seep, seep sifting potion. What was I thinking? Was well, he seep sifted? But uh, I made it, didn't I? <laughs> oh lord. Let me see. Um, what am I now? A code rack, from the looks of it. <gasps> Rack? What were you expect? What were you expecting? An animal? Impossible. I was expecting a movable tennis ball. Seriously. Miss Sotheby, please excuse me, but I have to open the door. <gasps> I mean, at least it won't be able to find you. Miss Sotheby. The guard freezes with the dinner plate. Looking up and down in bewilderment. There is truly no one in the room, nor any places for anyone to hide. Huh? <laughs> this coat rack. Was it here before? Maybe. <laughs> he doesn't like the way it stands there. He turns his face around to the desk. He certainly can't miss that muddy, semi finished potion in the bowl. Cautiously dips his gloved fingers in and dabs his Mrs. Mud and takes a whiff. She must still be in the room. We gathered that much. Yes, indeed. Suffering she is in this very room. <laughs> oh, he's trying to hold in a cough. Itchy. Incredibly itchy. I know that feeling. It is painful. Her throat feels as if it had become a lump of soil where water weeds grow vigorously and they are dancing and burning. <coughs> Hold it in! <coughs> and there it is. <coughs> yeah, trying to hold in a cough is, is, not, is not fun. <laughs> I, I know that feeling firsthand. Miss Sotheby! I'm surprised I can move! <laughs> she grips her head, jumping like a standing twig towards the open door. What a strenuous move, but a painful pace. She can't help missing the days where she could walk with two legs. But the guard chooses her by the hole. Miss Sotheby, you are not allowed to leave the room without permission. Please forgive me for being violent. Oh dear. Okay, we need star and plant. Let me think. Who should I put in? Give me born bloom for plants. Who should I put in for star? Two cherry. Or maybe Sotha be? Oh, I can't deploy Sotha be. Never mind. I wouldn't see I'm her. here for a worn tooth. I think we're going to need more plant than star right now, since there's only two mineral enemies, so we more than, and there's only three star enemies. So we may need more plants, so it might be good with what we got here. I could swap diggers for Satsuki, though. Debuff control, seal, DPS control. Debuff burst damage control. Yeah, I'll play in Satsuki. Group crime. And for backup. I'll put in Charlie. D don't look at me. I'm not the one you saw in the warning. The secret attempt has failed. The dignified Kobrak is now joining the fight. Oh, that's why I can't put in so to be. <laughs> okay then. I hear something. Whose heart is beating so loud? Relax. Agents have guns. It's called common sense. Is that a toy? No! Retreat! What? I can't make the call? One's out. I 
Start each round, cast HP plus cast it. Oh, HP regeneration. Start return. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Shh. I hear something. We should listen to what people say. No. Don't be so furious. Secrets always hide in careless words. Listen carefully. Thank you for your cooperation. Naughtier than the Foundation's kids. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, what fell? The poster saw the beam smashes on the floor has taken effect. The guard is deeply troubled by the sneezes one after another. <laughs> you can never seize Ms. Sotheby the Great Potion Alchemist that easily! Good lord, you are messy. <laughs> More of the people in white are attracted by the noises in this room. What? What's going on? Nothing. Certainly not What's a What's wrong, Miss Sotheby? Your dress is a mess. Oh, this room smells terrible. Oh, my body is back. The potion's effect was off. The guard covered in odd slime tries to get up off the floor with great effort. Huh? <gasps> Good to see you here. We must apply for more guards for this room. I question how they can see through those masks. Oh boy. Well, we'll see how Soda Bee is getting along. I wonder how Mr. Apple is doing. See? We're all experts in vodka. What, the liquor? Part 4. Raise a glass. I never drank vodka, or alcohol in general, I never liked the stuff. Brisk, lively running footsteps echo between the walls of the empty hallway. <laughs> Miss Lilia! <laughs> you are here! Here you are! <laughs> oh, hey, Leilani. Our teacher asked me to give you this, and ask you to help us to... Um... What was it? Leilani... Ilani suddenly stops herself. She scratches her head bewildered, bewilderedly. To evaluate the mock exam of Zena's enrollment procedure. Oh, right! That's it! I couldn't find you anywhere. They said you were in the rehab center, so I came here. <sighs> as quickly as possible. Clearly. Well, turns out the moment I saw you, the thing just slipped my mind. <laughs> I'm overexcited. All right, I got it. I'll head back then. It's a great pleasure to see you today. Miss Lilia, woohoo! <laughs> Go for it! Allez! Ganbate! Leilani waves at her, winning, winning away delightfully. Jesus Christ, my... I cannot pronounce it today. Why go for it, me? Do I look like a stagiaire to her? Nivashna. Let me check. Elevation, 2,500 feet, mountainous terrain, dense forest area, good atmospheric visibility. Enemies, 
groups of ground-based food creatures and airborne Alitio species O4. If we were to engage the enemy in this dense forest and fight in close range, our mobility will be largely reduced and we can't borrow roll to dodge attacks from the ground. But if we pull up and deal with the Air Force first... Hmm, <laughs> close enough. Ready to fight. Lilia signs her name on the paper. Just what are we getting into now? We try to get a read on this girl, even after encountering her in a boss fight, in fact, in the last chapter. Okay, so we need beast type here. Play Melania. Like, funny, funny. And. I guess play Lonnie. Would you like a fruit cup first? Let's see now. What is that you got on going on here? Grace's host. Crit rate and critical defense. Negative 25%. Okay. And, uh... An eye for an eye. Deeper, deeper, deeper. <laughs> Hmm. What kind of new recruits they will let in by giving out such a simple exam? She takes a few mouthfuls from the military canteen hanging on her belt. Are you evaluating the battlefield mock exam for this year? I heard Zeno has updated their question bank. Madam Z walks up to her from the other end of the hallway. Not far away from her, a dressy stranger follows. No, just killing time. She throws the exam paper aside, looking up and down at the wand holding newcomer. Their eyes meet. Hmm. <sighs> Julius. I smelled bison grass. Huh? In your canteen. Ha, oh, right. Authentic Zubrovka. One of the few pastimes I have here. Wanna have a sip? No, thank you. It smells fresh. Tender. Like time and lavender in spring. 
I believe it is precious. You can smell things. Fresh indeed. Made in 1929. I'll say it's already about... Uh, forget it. I don't do months. A sensitive time. Without saying any more words, they all cast their eyes on the closest window. Behind that window, on the bed, lies a patient, securely packed by magnetic coils, rubber tubes, and a transparent helmet. So, you're here for Virtin too? I'm showing her around the foundation, and decided to drop by the rehab center. <sighs> Miss Ray Jr. sits by the bed. She has noticed the visitors at the window, but she doesn't turn around to them. Her back stiffens even more, a sign of vigilance. The ward is also guarded by several staff members of the Rehabilitation Center. The city of the art equipment sprawls up their uniforms. Does she dream? Sometimes. Adam Z stares at the reflection of Fuse's face in the glass. Let me show you somewhere else. Julius does not say another word. Silently, she follows Madam Z and moves towards the other side of the hallway. Neither of them looks back. At one point or another, the figures overlap each other, as if they were the same person. Lilia turns her eyes back on the inert person on, in bed. She tickles the canteen in her hand. It's still half full. You have a good taste, Bellwether. Never tried the vodka from 1929 before. <sighs> good for you to get this in the US when both alcohol and coumarin were banned. The thing you said about take care of them for me when necessary, I'll consider it. Hmm. Raise a glass, Padruga. To your health, your soon recovery. To our better lives. To this unknown date. To this messed up time. Za zdarovye. You have a basic idea of this place now. I'll walk you to your room. Is there anything else you want to know? Probably not right now. What do I have to do so you will release Burton? Someone has hit the nail on the head. <laughs> <laughs> It depends on what you hope to achieve. Depends on us. Is that what you said? Burton, the person we rely on, is being hypnotized in the rehab center. That suitcase, the world we inhabit, has been taken away for research purposes. It's as if the whole thing was manipulated to leave us high and dry and isolated, so that you would have something on us. We do not have a choice, Madame Z. Mm. However, if we change the condition, that something they have can turn the negotiation around and in your favor. Like what? I... I do not understand what you mean. Huh? Before she went to the rehab center, Burton asked me about which department you would be in, and we have worked out a feasible proposal. <sighs> but a catalyst is what we need at present. The quiet, mild, and tranquil status quo makes the change seem unnecessary. A proper gust of wind will vitalize the wave of change and push it to the cusp of revolution. You mean... but... It is risky. That's true. I cannot give you any promises. But a fixed pattern of management will only impede the development of everyone. I hold the same idea as Verdins in this case. Or, there is another path in front of you. Sign your name and become an official member of the Foundation. A path that many arcanists who cannot support themselves yearn for. <sighs> 
So, you are not inducing me to join the Foundation? I'm here to show you around. My senior asked me to make sure that you had a comforting tour. I hope this tour is helpful for you. I'm sure it was, eh? Helped you just get a proper perspective of what's going on. A, note, a notebook left aside. A neat detailed note, so someone's longing. 2006, 206th LSCC seminar note. At the meeting this morning, MP Callahan and his great grandson, Dr. Callahan Jr., submitted the research report on zebra crossing, lemon, snow leopard pattern, and transportation and teleportation arcanum rituals and joint names. In the report, they mentioned an innovational point of view on the relations between zebra crossing and the crisis in human subconsciousness that between horse herds and the feeling of levitation. Supported by a considerable amount of experiment data, they were granted Series D funding of level 1 to 11 by the LSCC funding channel. In the same meeting, 10 news, I don't know how to pronounce that, 107 stable release was displayed, which were given rounds of applause in the room for 17.8 seconds. There is no doubt that the display was one great success. It was a pair of artificial lower limbs, its skin and blood vessels crafted through cell re reproduction and monkey brain transplantation, Jesus. And the bones and muscles were made with branches, white crystal powder, woolen threads, and golden privets from southeast of France. Are we, I'm sorry, are we making a Frankenstein monster of some kind here? Or some kind of amalgamation thing going on here? What is, what, what is this? It's capable of all kinds of movements, including walking, running, jumping, and gymnastic moves. You can even spider walk on the wall for 120.7 seconds. Just as its inventor, Miss Perotti, said, centered on the rationality and efficiency we learned from human civilization when we harness the unstable, ever changing arcanum technology, so we can provide real, stable help for more people. There's no doubt, Tan News, whatever is pronounced. It's a good example of LLC's, CC's core philosophy. Yes, this is the Laplace Scientific Computing Center. I think I'm going to enjoy working here. 1121, September 19th, Mesper Jr. Laplace Minute Book M, Volume 1, Page 1. Oh, this was from Mesmer Jr.'s notes. Here it is. Harder than the sands, warmer than the stones. Another shelter that you can count on. Part 5. In the castle. Where on earth do these feet come from? They're stuck in the crevices. Can't even get them out with the gravity vacuum cleaner. It's like they're rooted. They weren't here until a few days ago. I heard some of these seeds were also found in the rehab center. But the staff there got rid of them in no time. Druvus. So he must be spreading these seeds. So he did the same thing, leaving seeds in the crevices of the suitcase. Bloody hell. Looks like we have to dig them out one by one with our fingers. Gotta get it done before the inspector's here. Seed? What seed? Hmm. Let me take a look. See, now the guy saw this being cu um, curious about it. She stands on tiptoe, trying her best to figure out what's happening outside the room through the ground glass. Oh, I can't see anything. I'm so bored. Do I really have to sign the agreement to get out? But I haven't discussed it with anyone yet. A fair lady always thinks it through and reaches an agreement with the adults before she signs any document. Mr. Carson has said that hundreds of times. It must be vital. <laughs> Can't say disturbance on the other side of the door. Backup! We need backup! Emergency! Oh, now what? A whole forest appeared in room 101. The material area. It's... It's growing out of Timekeeper's suitcase. Yep, this is definitely you doing. What are you talking about? As I said, it's an emergency. 
The staff in room 102 and 103 are here to help. A large number of branches came out of the suitcase. They can detect our positions and even attack us on their own. Did you use Draco Drought? Of course not. The room is full of inflammables. The whole floor would be burning now if we did. We used military chainsaws, but it's a drop in the bucket. Fine, I'll go apply for a few more. Just wait for me there. Egerton, go help them out. Roger that. The forest is growing out of Miss Virgin's suitcase. Could it be? Struvis' great arcane skill. The gods are gone. Oh, I wish I could see that bizarre scene myself. Up. Huh? What's that strange sound? It's like someone's trying to set you free. She lays her eyes on the set door. The keyhole is rattling. Hmm? Is the door shaking? The rattle visibly becomes stronger. No, something... Something is coming in! The lock shakes so violently as if we were trying... As if we were wrestling something invisible. <gasps> Francis! The newborn vine ruthlessly pierces through the lock, leaving the ladder hanging in the air like a lifeless... Like lifeless grapes. The air smells like fresh plant juice. Wow! The lock! It's actually broken! Nice work, Druvus. Which means I'm free to go! Hooray! The door quietly opens, giving a way to the outside world. The place outside is turning into a vigorous new world. Damn, Druvus! I knew you were with plants, but... Jeez! on the ground have all sprouted. What on earth is going on? She is baffled as he fiddles with the sprouts on the ground. Hmm. The seeds have the same color as the crevices. I would have missed them if I didn't look carefully. Such a slender branch actually broke the lock. How marvelous! You are Miss Sotheby's hero! Hey! How did you get out? Yeah, that crap. <gasps> She's randomly pushed to the ground. Oof! <sighs> that hurts! How rude you are! My potions are broken! Did you conjure these plants? Stop them now! Huh? What are you talking about? He turns around to surprisingly, surprisingly find that the sprouts soaked in the potion are physically getting thicker and stronger. Uh oh. Oh my! It's my quick, quick growth potion for plants! Why did you have that? Twigs sticking into branches and new, more new branches come out from them. And new leaves, new sprouts. They crawl forward, forming a tree fortress around Sotheby. What do you think you're doing? Stop them! Oh, they're protecting, protecting her now. I... <laughs> no way! <laughs> come on! Try and catch me again if you can! So to me now. In this case, I'll put in Charlie for backup. And while I'm at it, let me show them a little bit more leveled up. Welcome to Typhon's movie party! There we go. Dental checkout. New branches and green leaves will sell to you. All allies gain a sealed, while plant allies gain one with the double one. Okay. So it's always welcome your friends to come with my shelter while keep out the ill intended. Intention. This has been their way in the past and will stay the same in the future. Thank you, Drew of us. Let's see. Mass healing gives all allies two rounds of cure when the round starts. HP plus the caster's attack times 50%. Mass attack deals 8% reality damage to two enemies and inflicts poison status for two rounds. When round ends, deals Genesis damage equals to the caster's attack times 30%. Okay. 
So Solar V is more of a debuff for than a pure on DPS. That makes sense. Whose heart is beating so loud? So Music dance is going to have a lot of um, uh, Tooth Fairy and Born Bloom. Don't be so furious. Agents have gone. It's called common sense. Fussy gods! Where are the fussy gods? Seals are something else. I'll give that much. It will all be fine. Whose heart is beating so loud? What's that? Please, don't resist. Agents have gone. It's called Still. common sense. I trickled the ingredients this time. Stop. I hear something. Relax. Talking out calms people down. to be shunted to some radical department. <laughs> now I got more insight into Twitch's quest unlock too. To welcome the unexpected, good luck. Clean your chimney so it won't get stuck. Part six, the Forest Express. <laughs> All right, here are 30 cans of Dr. Pepper, 20 bags of Happy Wedges, 11 bags of Bigfoot Gummy, and a bottle of insect repellent for plants. Hey, Rex. This is he finishes the sentence. A heavy box falls oh, through the... Oh, good timing. <laughs> what was that? Hold on, it falls through the what? The chimney waitly landing in the fireplace. Good lord, what just happened? There may be a bit of ash on them, but the flavor and texture should still be fine. Oh, <coughs> oh Regulus. Where have you been? The ash is killing me! That's way more than a bit! <laughs> I can't just carry them with me in broad daylight. Do you know how many procedures I've gone through just to pay you a visit? But how come you're locked in the same room? Since when has the Foundation become so benevolent? They would like Captain to guide me to the right path, to join the Foundation. After all, Captain was already a member of them. Yep, but I don't feel any difference in the benefits I get. At best, I could contact someone from the outside. And you're here. So, Texas Hold'em? <laughs> That's no. That's not what I'm here for. I've shown you the storm records these years, so... Did you find anything? Hmm... You call it a record, but it's so brief that it only has start time and duration. I can't tell any pattern from that. Hmm... 
This apple believes that the storm, which happens randomly, does not conform to the self-adjusting nature of the universe. Self-adjusting? Hmm. Oh. Is that the theory you mentioned before? Something like, there should be someone who intervenes or improves the system in order to reduce the growth of the instability of the universe? For example, if the universe is a mooring rope, no, a bunch of ropes, there has to be a sailor who pulls the ropes to keep them in order or something. I'm trying to make heads and tails of what, just, what he just said. I'm not sure what he's just talking about now. Sounds like the cosmology from centuries ago. He doesn't seem keen on the theory, nor does he repel it. He just quickly spins on his heels without saying a word. But your metaphor reminds me of Madame Z's research on string theory. She advocates that the energy string is the most basic unit of the universe. Are you talking about Vertin's boss? Boss? Well, if that's your definition of immediate supervisor, then yes. Madame Z was a scientist who studied in Britain before she joined the Foundation. Bread and honey are the staff of life. That makes sense. Well, it's not a good choice for most scientists. That's Recently, tough. she has been promoted from the chief of the vice president's staff to a formal member of the committee. I guess she will spend even less time in the lab. Then a violent bump comes from outside the door. What the hell? Ugh. The whole building shakes. Did something hit it? Let me see. Probably the plants. Yep. Looking out the window, they see a giant oak cut down from its bottom, leaning on the hallway of the second floor. Yep, there's Juvis and Sotheby. Among its ever-glowing branches stands a familiar figure in a black dress, and a young teenager with a hat, waggling and swaying on a branch, follows her. Summoned by peculiar chanting, more and more trees go up from the ground, stretch and spread in midair. Is that... Druvis? And... Sotheby? In other words, the cavalry's here. He turns around, looking serious. What's this? Guys? I am not going to be dragged into a ride at this point. <gasps> is that Druvis? What happened to her? Her new hairstyle is sort of cool. Captain, it's not the point. Agreed. Not the point at all. I gotta go. If you want me to take part in such an event, my name should never be in the visitor log. <laughs> Looks like the whole building will be your battlefield. Alright, good luck. Wait a minute. If we join Druvis, what would happen? <laughs> what do you think would happen? What would happen? I'm not a prophet. But this is gonna be the best spot for protest. This building is the furthest one from the center of the foundation. On the first and second floors are material rooms and research offices. Few staff stay here. The room next to yours is the projection lab. It was used to control the slides projected in the lobby. That screen is gone now, but the transfer devices and circuits are still there. You know what? If you're going to protest, make it loud. <laughs> oh, X, we see what you're doing here. You don't, you're saying you're not helping, but Technically, you are, just not actively. You're not slick. It's been a long time since the Foundation had something this much fun. He pulls out the one sleeve and wiggles his whip and quickly exits the room. As he said, he doesn't want to get caught up in all this. Miss Druvis, is Burton having a fight with the Foundation? Yes. We have a disagreement with the Foundation, Miss Sotheby. Burton is seeking a limited freedom for us. Her aspiration is to restore the peaceful life before the storm. For the authorities, however, her aspiration and ambition are labeled as deviation and rebellion. We are thus tempted, alienated, and arrested unjustly. That's why we've been grounded all these days. So we're helping Burton now. Is that right, Miss Druvis? I really feel like doing something for her. Just like what I'm doing right now. Standing brave on the tree. Right. On the tree. 
We need to move forward, to move one step further. When we meet up with Regulus and Apple, our voices will be stronger, and more and more people will offer their help. Are you certain about that? I believe that when the day comes, we will be able to shake up the balance in the Foundation and tilt it to our side. Shake up the balance? Wow! Maybe Vashon will come back herself by then! Got it! Now my goal is to make more potions so the trees can grow larger and larger! Make them super large! This is going to be a protracted war of resistance. We'll end up making enemies of the Foundation. But, in this, but at this point, I don't care. <laughs> it's not like I was a fan of the Foundation from the get-go. After we rescue Regulus, please maintain our territory of the woods with the rest of your potions, Miss Sotheby. Sure, I will economize on them. Look, X is coming out of the room. He left. It seems he has made his choice. Not helping us or them. Well, at least no one is getting hurt from the boiling pot this time. Let me see. There are more guards at the door now. It seems everyone's there. Perhaps they have guessed our next move. Regulus. Let's go. It's time to meet up with our companions. Go, go! Regulus must be bored to death just as I was. Probably. Two of his laser's her wand. As the tank goes on, her hair becomes increasingly glistening gold. The Oakmart sun. Moment. Both smarts on like waves. The wet scales keep growing, extending, chasing, and overlapping each other, and their crowns suit, suit forward like missiles. Everyone, get ready to engage! To be continued. <laughs> Oh wow, we got a mix of f all four here. We got two beasts, two star, a plant, and a mineral. A stack of sturdiness. Oh boy. Not sure who to bring in for this fight. The first wave is going to have a plant, star, and beast type. In which case, we'll need beast, plant, and mineral. Then we need to start to deal with the mineral here. Let's just go all in with everything we can. That's case. I'm getting turned in here. Alright. Just one thing. I will be home by 10 p.m. And Melania. Or when I just case Silence. Of extra healing. Handle it gently. 
legends have gone. It's called Flying Handbag for only 3,000 paper aunties. Bloody prom. It's the all clean and peaceful moment. The ocean dried and I'm alone again. <laughs> It's one out. It's two out. Whose heart is beating so loud? Handle it gently. Don't be so furious. My child, here's something fun for you. And we're done. Stay low profile. I don't want to be shunted to light work. Hmm. Don't cut off power so quick, silly. You missed the song. Part seven, the pirate's declaration. The receptionist is confirming the name list just submitted by the House of Integris. Integratus. The Vice President is coming her way. It's rare to see her picking up the files herself. But as the daily agenda checker shows, the chance of the Vice President asking for this name list is 85%. Do we have the candidate's name list? Show it to me. Yes. Please wait a minute. It'll be prepared right away. That's right. Thanks to the invention designed by the Laplace Scientific Computing Center, everything here is highly controllable, efficient, and has logic within. The fingers of the reception is slightly preferred because the keyboard. So you'll be able to locate the files faster than ever. Suddenly, she freezes. Um, why is the light on? The horrible prediction in her mind, she hesitantly turns to the wall with the open mouth and round eyes. <laughs> a gigantic projection appears on the wall. An apple shows up in the blurry projection under a sense of poor resolution. Send it to the by the merchants who need the giant pistol. The words glaring, this is a war! Warning! Warning! Everybody listen up! We have taken over the foundation! Oh, Our demands sense of the are that that early. release us! Set Burton free! You have three days. After that, we are. The receptionist cuts off the power, terrified. The lobby, which sees people striding in and stucking off all the time, now freezes in dead silence. Madam, I. I didn't. I. What's the matter? Something wrong with the printer? No, no. Oh, right. Uh, the candidate name list. Here you are. She passed on the nameless with a pale face. Thank you. This is exactly what I need. Constantine casts a quick look at the wall. The source of the disturbance has gone. Sorry for the scene. Like others here, they also have the right to make their voices heard. It is the essential step for us to come to an agreement. We will take care of this, don't worry. She smiles. As he does so, the people around her are visibly relieved and restored to life. However, perhaps we should stop using the old projector. It may lead to accidents, don't you think? Understood. I'll remove the transfer devices now. She jumps up on her feet and salutes her. Constantine turns around and leaves. I did not like she was so calm in that. Oh, bloody hell! How dare they cut off the power! This pirate has so much left to declare. Wimps, cowards, hypocrites! Hear, hear! I can't agree more. It is very rude to hang up before others finish their words. This is not telephone, Miss Sotheby. But, of course, that's not the point. No matter what, we've communicated to them the most crucial requirements for negotiation. I'm sure they will respond to us properly. Question is, where's Sonetto and all this? Surely she'll have something more to say about this. 
I just want to take the chance to show our attitude. Taking over the radio station at the headquarters of the Foundation, it's a gas in the late hundreds of years. Oh, it would have been perfect if we could have another You Can't Win to close it out. We could look around here to see if there's other broadcasting equipment. However, this Apple does not recommend frequent provocation. Right now, it's more important to patrol the surroundings in case we are ambushed by the guards. Miss Druvis is forming Abatis alone downstairs. Perhaps she needs our help. Mm, fine, you have a point. This pirate has decided to put off the plan to liberate the Foundation. Sir. Almost reluctantly, she forces herself to stop looking at the radio. Besides forming Abatis, what else do we need to do? There's much to be done, Captain. Find water sources, transfer essential equipment, reserve enough food, set up multiple defenses in the woods, and arrange a duty schedule. Make sure someone is garrisoned outside the suitcase while others are resting inside. Well, I have the tomato and potato seeds from Ms. Druvis. We must plant them in the suitcase to guarantee food supply. Um, tomato and potato? Yep. All vegetables, no meat? Oh, they're meant for the piggies that grow my bacon. Do you have a That's what you got. When I, mean, I was regulars. wandering the seas, at least I could have a grilled <laughs> sea bass every day. Oh, I wonder what Vertin eats in rehab. Will she be hungry? Well, considering she's been stuck in her dream for, for memory for the past who knows how many days, no doubt she's probably going to be pretty famished after all this. Oh, God. <laughs> <gasps> Almost forgot about the goodies accent. Oh, that's right. He did we'll bring We'll definitely something. hang in there for a few more days with them. Sotheby, Mr. Apple, you go downstairs first. I'll meet up with you once I bring the box down there. All right. We will meet you at the entrance. Stay safe. I honestly did forget accent brought them supplies. I, I wonder if he anticipated this or he was just being nice. Probably the latter. Is this X we're talking about? Though I still don't know a lot about the guy. A waiting seat left behind. You are surrounded by the clerks. Maybe they didn't catch your words just now. Say it out. Now catch them now. Okay, we need beast type. We're dealing with one beast type here. An inflexible defender and two defender. Two plant types. So yeah, we need more beast types here. Six, I can't have a Whatever. Let a surge of Moxie prepare you for combat. Moxie plus five when the character ends his battle. Hell joy. Oh, This'll be fun. The show's on, hounds. Plan A. Thou shalt make an atonement for thy sins in full. Time waits for no one, even for a great thing. Conventional choice. The pan fell. The pan oh, fell. Fucking master. Yeah, what made that is a bit annoying. Let's take care of you first. An eye for an eye. Fair turn. Feel it paid and know with regret. One out. Three, two, one, down. A tooth for you. Fair touch. <laughs> Honey attack. Your dream. Bad guys are all gone. No worries. You have made your voice heard. You have made your point known. Snacks at the new era and the rockin' pirates. Wicked bits, raw yogurt bullets, pink yogurt from Michigan, which pops out like a bullet. Not so good as I thought it would be, but it does feel novel. Hmm. 
Well, mm, 5.6 out of 10. K and K, oatmeal breakfast bars. I actually a candy bar with little oatmeal. Not bad. I'll give it an 8. Kelts and lager cookies. Known for rich butter within, it has a rough flavor of the lager style, which is exactly the opposite of the royal style. What does lager style mean? Dry as sawdust? I will put in a on the prohibited list of my sip and it's never getting removed. 1 out of 10. Was that bad? Patata tato chips. Face chips. There are all kinds of facial expressions. I may look the same in deep pride. Too many crumbs. Can't taste the flavor of potato. Barbecue with mustard flavored. Well, acceptable. 4.5 out of 10. <laughs> Cheetos, Cheetos, amazing seeds. Club snack, cheese surname, toad jam flavored. What? When your product is buried in soil but can't go into anything after three days of watering, 24 times in turtle soap, by the way, you better not put the word seed in its name. Zero. Check out this big zero. <laughs> Wow, regular subscribe to food credit, isn't she? <laughs> Divide a circle into half. Each curve has its own direction. Part 8. Both sides of the table. There is no need to hold an emergency meeting for these. Such declaration of war without tactic or plan B is typical example of Arcanist's behavior. The area they controlled has no value at all, no matter in terms of the size or the influence. Well, the administration department has not taken official actions yet. I heard the plan was to dispatch a team to escort them to the School of Discipline. Problem solved, then. Let's see if you can even catch them. Books of case files are closed. As the stairs squeakily scratch the floor, the attendants of the meeting stand up. Next time, if Verdon brings back more unregistered arcanists, will the same thing happen again? Madam Z stands still where she was. She brings up a good point. The committee member stops by the door and slowly turns back to her. I don't understand. It's not a shame to join the Foundation, is it? By signing the agreement, Arcanists will enjoy the right to use arcane skills in human society and be bestowed great honor. The Human Resource Department could have used the whole floor to hold the applications a dozen years ago. Not even the New Age movement could challenge the Foundation's authority in the international community. And these short-sighted exceptions, they aren't even worth being made a topic for the meeting. Yet? They are not here for the Sempakdo Foundation. They are here for Verton. They choose to follow her out of their own will because of their admiration for her. That is the essential difference between them and our former recruits. You mean, it's not important at all for them to join the Foundation? Pretty much. You're only in this for Verton. No one else. I'm afraid so. But... We can't expel them. We both know that the Foundation now requires new members to form a stronger force. <laughs> what are you trying to say, Miss Z? Skip to the point. She returns to her seat, sit down, sits down and opens the folder again. Today, the House of Intergratus has resubmitted a revised draft of Storm Reformation, Manpower and Discipline. I think it's time to decide if this draft can be adopted, and then start a debate. You are asking for troubles, madam. Please turn to page 21, section 3. What are you up to, Z? External personnel recruited by the timekeeper should be placed within the timekeeper's department. The timekeeper has the duties of education and discipline to them and should be responsible for their follow-up behaviors. Personnel within the timekeeper's department, subject to the Foundation staff code, will take orders from the timekeeper and are not required to take direct orders from the Foundation. This section allows those unregistered arcanists to have more autonomy 
and develop a stronger sense of identity as a part of the Foundation. Meanwhile, by giving orders to the Timekeeper, the Foundation still has the military right to deploy them. It can solve the current problem. In other words, they'd only have to visit, listen to Virgin. And the Foundation could still be the ones issuing out orders to Virgin as he is the Timekeeper. That seems like the logical course of action. Why don't they just do that? Which means we will be working with some uncontrollable mercenaries. And the problem is what exactly? I'll say it's the reserve service for wartime. It's not going to work. What happened when the Arcanists were not under control? Massacres, tyranny, endless revenge. History is nothing but a sewer to them, where they vent their excessive energy and deceive those in power with a speech of ignorance. The reality has proven that. Exactly. What's more, there has never been a reform as such in the history of the Foundation. During the unexpected storm, reforming in a rush will only increase the hmm? <laughs> Sorry for being late. Constantine. Constantine strides to the meeting room, throwing her folder on the table. Quite a heated discussion. Everyone went quiet real quick. I can see you all have a great interest in this draft proposal. <sighs> Hope I didn't miss too much. Oh, I just can't not. I just it always feels like there's tension wherever she goes. I I just can't stand it. <laughs> A determined visitor, the guardians wandering around the edge of the woods won't give trying to invite you back into the big white house. Reject them. It's like one on level forty, two minerals, and one silver energy. Star. Here. Fairy. Charlie. There is one mineral enemy, or like, I mean, one plant. No, two minerals and one star. In which case, you're probably going to have one plant in here. Let's have a party then. Group crime. Oh no, it's nothing. Did the show begin? Excellent. Get ready to step onto the stage. Relax. Uh -huh. Thank you for your cooperation. Finish them off. Illusion is enough. Thank 
Yes. I've already said that Sotheby doesn't need a bodyguard. Sir, sweetie, sir. At the moment, you are not too keen on accepting any invitations. You feel comfortable and free in the woods. There's something else here. Sounds of different colors go into your left ear and slip out from your nostrils. Just like a toboggan sliding down a soft piste from a cabin up the mountain to the finishing line at the foot. Leaving nothing but excitement that doesn't even last. Your opening line sucks. Like, seriously, oh. dude. Like, seriously, where did that come from? Um, what did you say? I, I got bad signal here. Oh, bad. Bad signal indeed. I mean, I may be different from all of you, but I have a conscience, okay? I never talk shit, that's the bottom line. What I said were all felicitous hints. Whenever you say something, it always sounds so cryptic that it goes right over my head. I can never understand what you're trying to tell me. I'm sure you have noticed it. Between the glacier and the valley, between the snow mountain and the lake, stands a great building we're all familiar with. Close your eyes and feel the patterns of interlaced gray and white. The flow of the building, so balanced and symmetrical, is like a sophisticated symphony with beautiful melody. That may be your first impression of the Foundation. After that committee meeting, however, all I could see on your face was a terrible mess, like it was licked by a terrier which had just finished hunting. How can you tell? <laughs> what the f are they talking about? Who can explain their relations for me? Good question. In this lonely, whirling, dark universe, I'm the only one who was willing to tell you all these stories on the cold bench in the park. Who is the boss of the Foundation? You haven't met him yet. Actually, only a few have, as the opportunities are always fleeting like the falling stars. Right, because Constantine's only the vice president, or vice leader, whatever. We haven't seen the wheel head honcho yet. But it's okay. The Foundation still works well without him. Our responsible Constantine, working without any complaint like an unbreakable lily, is trying hard to change the Foundation's direction to what she believes to be correct. Right, responsible. Sir. Come on, let's look at the bigger picture. Humans have worked out with the brilliant folds in their brains that they need multiple parties to create a balance of power. So bang. There come the committee, the House of the Integratus, and many other administration departments. The House of Integratus and the Committee are in charge of lawmaking, not just in the Foundation, but in countries and even in the global society. Any affairs related to the human arcanist relationship will be brought to their table, and they will handle each of the affairs with their properly manicured but muscle-torn hands. The Committee has the right to approve or reject the proposals from delegates. Well. Of course, some of the delegates are very stubborn. They will keep submitting their proposals no matter how many times they have been rejected. Just like a red-backed shrike with fledglings, repeatedly submitting rejected motions until they are exhausted. When it comes to the formal debate, you will get to watch a dogfight full of polite yet viciously aggressive language. Everyone, including the president, the delegates, the parties, and the expert groups, will turn into maniacs in the arena of power. As that's the way politics goes. It's why I stay away from it so much. After this stage, the final result depends on the white marble house. They seldom express their opinions, but they will, sometimes. Are there more? 
Oh, yes, yes. Look how polite you are when you ask that question. Like I'm some high school student working part-time in a mall selling local socks to you. I didn't need to say it like that. And I'd be very nice and tell you, of course. We must not ignore the other administration departments of the Foundation, as well as the headquarters poor branches located in different countries, and the humanitarian school of primary defense of mankind that works like a poorhouse. Remember, the Foundation is managing the whole world. Of course, they need some rules that are hard to understand. So the wise will be wiser, and the silly will be sillier. While those in the middle will show an innocent smile when they die. Humans are experts on these things. My stupid Arcanist, don't just complain. Learn to see what they are after, okay? Catch the unspoken drifts between the lines, so one day you will understand. Your stupid Arcanus. What? Life is like a ride on the toboggan. Well, that was certainly something. I don't know what to make of that. Though, then again, when this guy talks, I don't know what to make of it at all. Really. Ears low, tail down, she sidles back to the shadow of the house. Part 9. A Wandering Dog. We are on page 21, section 3. Miss Z insists on adopting this draft. Miss Z, please, walk Madame Constantine through this section. No need for that. I have read the stenographer's report. In fact, this is the second time I'm addressing this proposal. Considering the Integratus has been very determined to its submission, I believe many delegates must have a burning interest in the case. At least it's worth some discussions. Pedro, why do you oppose it? The rise of Manus Bindicte has caused the Arcanum world to gradually break free from the Foundation. Therefore, we need to monitor what our Arcanists think and control what they do in a stricter manner, in case they go too far. Manus Vindicte has a subversive slogan. Their influence has been getting bigger since the first storm, so has the scale of their infiltration. In the Walden incident of 1929, we were given away in advance. It probably had something to do with the infiltration. Hmm. Very well. A point worth discussion. But it is not relevant to our subject here and now. Stenographer, please take down the point Mr. Rosa just made. That will be the subject of our meeting in the third week. Katz, what do you think? The expectations of our constituencies are on our shoulders. Fear of the Arcanist has grown due to the attacks by Manus Vindicte in many regions. It's not ideal for us to implement the peace policy and promote the arcane technology. To maintain the Foundation's reputation, we have to start with the registered Arcanists, strengthen the regulations and show the public that Arcanists are reasonable and trustworthy. That is why I am opposed to the draft. Inspiring. Hmm. She stands up, pacing around in the meeting room. However, what a shame. None of you have realized the key factor in this subject. Key factor? What is the key element that decides whether this proposal will be approved or not? Manus Vindicte? The constituents? No. It's far simpler than those. It's Virgin. Virgin? According to the proposal, Virgin will become the only tie between these unregistered Arcanists and the Foundation. As the number of Virgin's field missions increases, she will inevitably get in touch with more and more unregistered Arcanists. That is to say, outside the Foundation's jurisdiction, 
The group of people is getting stronger each day. And her attitude towards the Foundation will be the key to all the issues. Virgin received her education in SPDM from an early age. She has a clear tendency. Yes, that's what I think. That's also why I have asked someone who can provide a valid argument on the issue to join us. You may come in, Sonetto. I was wondering when she's going to show up in all this. The door is pushed ajar. Sonetto enters the room, humbly and prudently. Her uniform seems to have changed a little. Good day, Madam Vice President. Greetings to all committee members. May the peace be with us. Oh, she's wearing that. The timekeeper is still in treatment. Before she is restored to health, I appoint you to take care of all the relevant matters on her behalf. Copy that. Now, I will ask you some questions. Please answer them truthfully. Oh, I already, I already have a bad feeling about this. Clear. Based on your observation, do you, or do you not, think the Timekeeper has been loyal to the Foundation? <gasps> of, of course! All the students of the School of Primary Defense of Mankind are devoted to the peace of mankind. We have pledged lifelong allegiance to the Foundation that leads the cause. <laughs> That's not what I'm asking. Oh, she's looking for a different answer. Let's put it differently. Why do you think Verton would provoke other students to rebel when she was in school? I... I do not know. I'm sorry. After the incident of the storm, why would Verton show reluctance to invite the unregistered Arcanists to join the Foundation? Because, um... At one point in her negotiation with the Manus Vindicte, Burton has agreed to join them. What do you think her true intention was? I... That'll be enough. I believe we all have our answers by now. Madam Vice President, uh, according to our investigation of the event in 1929 and Timekeeper's report, it is highly possible that Arcana of Manus Vindicte has the arcane power to influence the sanity and consciousness of others from a certain distance. She is able to exert an irresistible psychic influence on others through short conversations. Timekeeper... Timekeeper was under huge threats at that time. I think all of her responses were out of her survival instinct. This is also one of the survival strategies that have been taught in Chapter 1, Book 3 of Introduction to Strategy, edited by the School of Primary Defense of Mankind. I see. You may leave the room now. Sonetta's eyes turn red. <laughs> I... We appreciate the information you just added. You've always been an excellent student. We are very proud of you. Now... It's time to leave and rest. Copy that. She leaves the room as instructed. <sighs> Silence fills the room. What a controversial issue. What's your view on this, Miss Z? Madam Z stands up. She takes her time before speaking. In my point of view, Virgin does have doubts about current system. But doubts doesn't mean disloyalty. In fact, if we want to further expand the staff to contain against the Manus Vendicte, we need flexible management. Apply customized standards to arcanists with different backgrounds and different training objectives. Through this, not only can we remove the doubts of Virgin, but also ease the tension between the Foundation and other unregistered Arcanists. Constantine squints at her. You have been very thoughtful. Carry it out, then. The stenographer pauses out of surprise. 
She looks up at Constantine, seeking confirmation from the look on her face. The stenographer quickly regains her composure and starts typing. Pass. What are you up to, Constantine? A troublesome neighbor. They are noisy, aggressive, and many. Ask them to leave. Me beast, I believe. these things. Every wall has a hole. When a character is attacked by enemies with the strongest latest, HP minus max HP times 25%. In other words, we'll be doing more damage. Exactly. Indeed. The woods cannot shelter everyone. Some have to seek themselves a new home. <sighs> oh, that's been something. If it doesn't stop raining, someone will be the first knight to sacrifice his life because of the rusty armor. <laughs> I suppose so. But we're going to have to call it for tonight because it's getting at the usual cutoff time and I don't want to go through the entire Act 4 all in one night. I want to save some of it for next time. So that's going to be it for tonight. Things are definitely taking a turn. Juvis, Sotheby, Regulus, and Apple are all trying to form a rebellion against the Foundation. The Foundation are trying to strike back, but in their own way. It seems that everything, all of this, is hinging on Virgin. Quite a lot of pressure that's being put on this one girl that's, in, that's been unconscious for this entire time. Ugh. But we'll see how it goes next time. However, it won't be on this coming up week. This coming up week, I'm going to be streaming on a on the entire weekend because of an event happening. Sometimes in... someone looks away just like thee, but no one hath noticed it. Yes, I know. Thank you, Blade. I mean, Alpha Knight, whatever. As I was saying, there's going to be an event going on this weekend in Splatoon 3, and I'm planning on trying to stream it all the entire event, the entire weekend. It may be a bit difficult, but I'm going to try to make it work. Anyway, that's going to do it for tonight. I will catch you all next time. Until then, stay safe and be well, Cyber. Thank <laughs> you.